Hey, it's Reese, and you probably haven't heard, but there's a new ISO safety standard for quick release systems in kiteboarding. So basically a bunch of kiteboarding brands, including Ocean Rodeo and the GKA and some safety organizations all came together to create this very first um, worldwide safety standard for kiteboarding. After several years of everyone working on this, um, a new chicken loop testing machine was created to ensure that any new chicken loop designs or kiteboarding leash designs work properly when they're in the real world. So today I'm just going to be running the new i3 chicken loop through some demo tests just to show you how the chicken loop testing machine works and what each chicken loop has to go through in order to pass ISO certification. The max load test has to load the chicken loop up to three times the maximum rider weight. The maximum rider weight is considered 120 kilograms, so the chicken loop has to be loaded up to 360 kilograms for 10 seconds without breaking or permanently deforming. The dry and clean release test has three different tests. The first one, the chicken loop is loaded up under 15 kilograms of weight and then is released. And we measure the amount of force it requires to release the chicken loop. And if that amount of force is less than 170 newtons, then the chicken loop passes this test. The 15 kilogram release test is designed to see if the chicken loop will still properly release under minimum load. Not all safety situations where you actually need to release will have the chicken loop fully loaded. This test must be repeated three times for 15 kilograms and the chicken loop must pass all three times in a row. The next dry and clean release test, the chicken loop is loaded up to one times the maximum rider weight, which is 120 kilos. We measure the amount of load it requires to release the chicken loop, and if that amount of load is less than 170 newtons, then the chicken loop passes that test. The release force of the chicken loop is measured by a newton meter, which is connected to the release cuff of the chicken loop and pulls on it until it releases. For the final dry and clean release test, we load the chicken loop up to 240 kilograms or two times the maximum rider weight. And then once again, we release the chicken loop and measure the amount of force it requires. If this force is less than 170 newtons, the chicken loop passes the test. And this also has to be repeated three different times. For the dry sand release test, the chicken loop is covered in sand and then loaded up in the machine and it is tested again at three different weights, 15 kilograms, 120 kilograms, 240 kilograms. 
has to release at less than 170 newtons again in order to pass. The chicken loop is placed in a bucket of special ISO approved sand and is pushed forwards and backwards and side to side five times so that sand is forced into any gaps that it can fit into. When you take the chicken loop out of the sand, you're not allowed to knock any of the sand off of the chicken loop until the test is finished. This sand is specially designed sand to be a chicken loop's worst nightmare. It includes all different sizes of sand grains from tiny little pieces of powder sand to thick chunks of coral. If there's a way for this sand to get into the chicken loop, it will find its way in. Musk. This test is repeated three times for each load. The wet sand release test is identical to the dry sand release test, except now there's water in the sand to mimic as if you were on the beach, your chicken loop filled up with sand, and then you went out on the water kiting. Mm -hmm. 